Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about uh, how the Chinese eunuchs, how they managed the 10,000 virgin harem in uh, ancient China. Here's a little fun fact, I made a short video on this emperor uh, a few months ago. The Chinese emperor uh, Tang Xuanzong, he had upwards of uh, 40,000 concubines. I believe he uh, holds the record for the uh, most concubines in uh, Chinese history. It's pretty hard to top that number. So let's get started. So as I've mentioned in the previous videos, the concubines, they are essentially the wives of the emperor. And because of that, uh, only uh, eunuchs without dons can be around the, these uh, Chinese concubines. So they're brought into the royal palace regularly in batches. There's no set number. It could be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50. And they're generally uh, aged uh, from 13 to 18. I know this sounds sick, but uh, back in the day, uh, people died when they're 40. So this means that uh, they had to get married uh, at a much younger age. Now, these young girls, uh, when they're brought into the, uh, the royal palace, the forbidden city, so they're all marked for purity, aka they are a virgin. So this process can vary, it depends on the uh, Chinese dynasty, but uh, a common marking would be something like a red dot on the uh, left arm. And this marking would be uh, removed after uh, they have sex with the emperor. And some of the concubines, they will actually never sleep with the emperor, and they will die alone inside the uh, forbidden city as virgins. Life can get very lonely and isolated. After all, uh, it is impossible even for a king to have sex with tens and thousands of women. Now, before they are presented to the emperor, proper trainings must be conducted and followed. And some of these uh, procedures can be quite uh, vigorous. So, for example, they have to be taught on how to dance, how to read books, how to do poetry. They have to learn everything about the kingdom, about the emperor, and also uh, everyday uh, etiquette they have to follow. And this is also a major reason why uh, some of these women who uh, just uh, they don't do as well during training, they won't have the chance to ever be presented uh, to the front of the emperor. Only the best uh, girls are selected to have sex with the emperor. Now, all the informations about the concubines, they're kept uh, in the book. For example, their name, any special talents, family background, interests, hobbies, their facial feature, etc. The list goes on and on and on. The head eunuch, this is the uh, usually the most powerful eunuch in China. He uh, generally uh, stays by the emperor's side nearly the entire time as he's a servant. So the head eunuch, he will present this book uh, to the emperor every night. And uh, the emperor will generally read through it and see if anything catches his interest. And when the emperor, uh, he makes this decision, the eunuch team, then they head out with a red palanquin. I think that's how it's translated. I'm not sure. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird word to translate. It's called the uh, jiaozi in Chinese, and it's usually red. You know, in red it's lucky in China. And uh, so the concubine will be invited to sit inside the, the jiaozi, and the eunuchs, uh, they will bring the concubine into the emperor's bedroom. So what happens from there is that the concubine, they will typically enjoy a luxury uh, flower bath. Once they're clean, then uh, this depends on the area. There were also various routines that must be followed once they, re they reach the emperor's bedroom. Things like uh, they must uh, kneel first, then crawl onto the bed uh, in certain positions. This is all to uh, show the ultimate respect to the emperor. And the eunuchs, they will often uh, eavesdrop through the windows or the blinds to make sure they hear sex noises, to make sure that uh, the marriage is being consummated. I know it sounds very weird and creepy, but they actually did this. Then uh, in the morning, the, the sheets are uh, checked for blood stain from the penetration. Now this is uh, only done with virgin girls that's uh, selected to have sex with Amper for the first time. And because they are virgins, they are expected uh, to bleed heavily for their first time. This uh, picture you will see, uh, I have added the arrow to uh, the cloth there with the blood stain. This was actually quite common back in uh, ancient China, this practice. And it is considered the ultimate honor to give birth to a son to the emperor. Because only a son can be crowned the prince and possibly become the next emperor. This will give the concubine the chance to become Empress Dowager. This is one of the most powerful positions you can hold within the royal family and inside the Forbidden City. Holding this position means wielding nearly unlimited power and wealth within the kingdom. And this obsession obviously has had some very extreme consequences throughout the ancient China and into modern China. This uh, got very very dark, especially during the uh, one-child policy with millions and millions of gender-selective abortions. 10 million abortions a year. Now, don't you wish you were an emperor in uh, ancient China? Well, you would think the obvious answer would be yes, but uh, you have to be careful of uh, what you ask for uh, sometimes. This is the haram, the crazy side where uh, all the men want. But there are also many dark sides uh, of Chinese history, which is 
dozens of times worse than anything you can imagine. You have to learn to be content and learn to be happy with uh, what you do have in life. Remember, this kind of treatment, this is only for the royals. 99% of Chinese people back in the day, they were monogamous. By monogamous, I mean one person for life, not one person at a time. And uh, remember this Chinese idiom, I mentioned this uh, before. Remaining faithful to the one until death. Always remember that. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching the video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>